Great. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Dale Harvey from Couchbase. Uh, I'll be talking today about CouchDB, a brief introduction to Membase, a brief introduction to CouchDB, and a brief introduction in how those two products are being integrated. I am from Scotland, so I'm sorry if nobody can understand me. Uh, just tell me to say things again. I'll probably be going reasonably fast, so if anybody has any questions, especially at the start, just feel free to interrupt me. Uh, quickly, who's familiar here with CouchDB? That's quite a lot of people. Uh, so I'll go through those very fast. Uh, who's familiar with Membase? OK, cool. Right, so first, yeah, this is the Couch to Be Gang sign, uh, invented by Presdy and Damien Katz. I just wanted to put that on a slide somewhere. Uh, so what is Couchbase? February, the company's Couch One, who was founded by Damien Katz, uh, merged with Membase. Uh, Membase is a company made by, uh, with a lot of the original committers from Memcached. So Membase was a product that was based around Memcached and we joined with Couch1 to be Couchbase. So what is Membase? First, some general use cases, uh, just to kind of understand the context of the application. Membase is used by Heroku, one of the like, largest uh, platform service providers. It's uh, used to back just a lot of their customer databases. It's also used by Zynga to back a lot of their games uh, and applications. And things like Zynga have lots of users all the time. Uh, they require really fast latency, lots of operations per second without dropping. So the 99th percentile need to be very fast reads and writes. Uh, inside Membase, you generally store game data, user data. Uh, same with uh, AOL, one of the largest products and uh, largest products on the internet. Uh, for AOL, they want to serve ad impressions, which is a popular use for Membase, where they need 40 milliseconds uh, response time to the client. So that means Membase needs to serve within five, at least within five to ten milliseconds, with a large amount of uh, advertising data. So how do they do this? Uh, mem the easiest way to describe Membase is a persistence and cluster manager on top of Memcached. So how many people are familiar with Memcached? Yeah, it's pretty much most people. Uh, on any large deployments, most people have Memcached inside. And Membase is uh, fully compatible with Memcached. It's a drop-in replacement that just adds on top of Membase. Uh, Memcached. So, yeah, generally it'll sit behind your web application servers. Uh, you can store as many, you add and remove clusters as you like. You, and there's a, uh, yeah, one of the big things about Membase is that it's not designed to be, it's not a programmer's database. It's designed for ops teams. So, there isn't, you just literally put your Memcached uh, API in there and then turn Membase on and you've got administrative interface to add and remove servers. It's not programmatically controlled if you don't want it to be. So that's saying fairly similar to what I've just said. Uh, downloads for Linux, Windows, and Mac now, finally. Uh, you start with a single node. We have an administrative interface where you literally just clag click a button to add servers, remove them, and rebalance. Uh, set and get is the Memcached API. Uh, we'll work with every Memcached install out of the box. You have cluster rebalancing, but I'll explain a little bit more about that. How Membase works is each database is divided into uh, V buckets. So we use consistent hashing as is fairly familiar to most people uh, to map a key to a fee bucket. And separately, each fee bucket can be mapped to a server. So only one server is controlled. Uh, each, 
each key maps to one server that's in control of that uh, key set. There isn't two servers that control one key, and the map will tell uh, the application where to go look up that key, and the V buckets are split across the servers. And so when you add and remove servers, all you need to do is regenerate a V bucket map, move the existing data over to a new server, and it's available immediately. Uh, there's also a replica system. So this is when you have 10 servers, one goes down, your V bucket map will be replicated on other databases. This is purely uh, a dead replica. It's purely reading the data. It's never used to serve until one of your servers comes down and you fail over, then that suddenly gets promoted to master and that's now in charge of serving data for that V bucket. And so yeah, everything that gets written to Membase goes straight into RAM uh, asynchronously. There is a sync command, but generally asynchronously, stuff gets per persisted to disk after it's served from RAM. Uh, the RAM is where you want to keep your entire working copy of data. It keeps an LRU cache, so when you, if it starts filling up, items will get ejected to the disk. Uh, and if you need to read an item from a disk, that'll just get kept in RAM for the time being until it eventually gets ejected. And so, yeah, there's zero downtime. So once a server fails, Immediately, the replicas become masters. Uh, you can add servers, dynamically rebalance them, remove them at any point. Uh, they're all kind of peer nodes. There isn't orchestrators. Uh, there isn't a master node that you have to read from with uh, slave reads. It's just a single uh, server in charge of a data. The tap interface provides streams so you can uh, plug any data that gets written into Membase, you can read back out from through a tap stream. Uh, you can build your own indexes, somewhat like how uh, Elasticsearch and those type of interfaces work. OK, is there any quick questions on Membase? No, oh, cool. I must have been very clear. I doubt it. Uh, so. What is CouchDB? Now, a lot more of you are familiar with CouchDB, but I'll go over it quite quickly. Uh, this is the original back of the napkin drawing by Damien, uh, kind of architecting some parts of Couch. But the important parts, I'll go through use cases as well. I like doing that first. So Sauce Labs are a browser testing company. They use CouchDB to store the results of their tests. They do kind of large-scale automated testing. Mebo use it for analyze. Mebo are an online chat application. They use it for archiving their logs and analysis. Uh, the BBC is a huge deployment that uses it to store customer preferences, all the settings that your page has and your cookies. They go into CouchDB. And Ubuntu One is one of the more interesting use cases where uh, your files on Ubuntu One, very similar to Dropbox, are available wherever you go. And they use that entire thing is backed by Couch. So they just store user files inside CouchDB and use replication to copy them to wherever you are. So quick introduction to CouchDB. Uh, the most important thing, two things are, one, that it's a document store, you store plain documents. You don't have a schema. You don't need to predefine your data. You just Everything is JSON. You just create a JSON document. A GET will read from the database. If the entire database is uh, accessed through a REST API. So most people will use uh, language drivers, but fundamentally, they're just wrappers on top of the REST API. And every language in the world has uh, reasonably easily, easy to use HTTP interfaces. Uh, it very much follows REST idioms, so gets to read data, puts to uh, post data to, to write data. Post is uh, a special function just to create new data. And delete, delete, you get given a database and an ID, and that will delete a document. Uh, 
Some of the interesting things about how CouchDB internally works architecturally, uh, all writes go straight to an append-only file. That means at any point of your database, if your server just completely dies, uh, there isn't going to be any memory, memory map files that are lost. It's all completely uh, robust. You'll never be able to lose data this way. Uh, when you append a new document, it just rewrite, it sends the old B tree into the new file. Uh, so it also means that you can, for backups and uh, compact, for backups, you can just literally rsync files across. You can, there's a single .couch file that is your data, and you can operate on that file as if it's a file without worrying about data integrity. Uh, obviously, because it's an append-only database, that means if you're editing documents, you're going to have lots of copies of that document inside the same file. So compaction just trims the old versions of the document that you don't need anymore. Oh, and I was quickly going to do, uh, accidentally skip this slightly. Part of CouchDB is inside the REST API, you can store, put it on the right screen. Part of the REST API allows you to score, uh, store schemaless JSON but you can also store binary attachments. Uh, so images, index.html files, CSS, as you can see, these are all coming straight out from the same CouchDB API here. So that's just a GET request that is being served by CouchDB straight out the database because there's an inbuilt web server. So you don't need to... Uh, for a lot of applications, you don't need an in-between web server to talk to your database. You can talk to it directly from itself. Uh, and I wanted to do a very quick example to show the REST API in action. So this is a post uh, operation. It's two lines of code from JavaScript. That's the JSON that you send in the post, and you get returned an ID. So for puts, you can define your own ID. For posts, they'll generate an ID for you. It's up to you which one you want to use. Uh, they'll also return this thing called a rev, which is a revision token. This is used for how CouchDB manages conflicts. So every time I want to change that data, I can see a new post coming in here, a new put coming in here where I've defined the ID. I have a new set of data here, and you can see you have to specify the current revision of the document before, uh, while you write new data. So that means if you don't supply the right revision, uh, right revision, it will tell you that it's conflicted, and you've got to find the new revision. So you can tell if there's any stale data inside of there, inside of your application. Right. Uh, so we have a bunch of documents inside of a CouchDB database. How do we uh, query those documents? How do we access individual documents? CouchDB has a very simple MapReduce framework that allows you to specify. So the one in the white is a map function. This is called on every document inside your database. Uh, and inside of it, you get given the document itself. So for this is saying, this is an example for a blog post where it's saying if type equals post, output the doc ID and zero, and I want the body of it and the title. And after that, if there's a, uh, an array in there. If there's comments in there, you can emit several comments. And you can specify things like you want them indexed by the created time. So you can sort, sort inside that. And there's also a reduce function here, which allows you to uh, 
reduce those values down to single summations. So that allows you to do counts of values, sums of values, and there's also statistics and those type of things. They're both written in JavaScript mainly. You can write them in CouchDB, uh, write them in Erlang or CoffeeScript if you particularly want to, or any other language. Uh, for replication, CouchDB has, it's an, obviously again through the HTTP API, allows you to replicate one database to another database. Uh, all the data, all you do is send a post request where you specify the URL of the source and the URL of the target. And that will literally, that will use the same put and get and post API that I described earlier, just to copy documents from one place to another. You can also say set this to be continuous, so all new changes will just get written to the new database. And that's how something like Ubuntu One will work. Oh, yeah. Uh, another big focus for CouchDB right now is on mobile devices. Uh, because mobile devices are often online, you need your data while you're not online. The offline sync through replication allows you to keep a subset of your data on your phone with you at all times while having an online version. And the conflict resolution inside CouchDB will make sure that you don't overwrite ac data accidentally. Uh, also, because it's written in our lang, it's a fairly low uh, memory footprint. It's it survives being killed like at, at any point without losing data. And also there's a geospatial index. So, so Volker here wrote a uh, GeoCouch, which provides postgres functions to uh, CouchDB. It has a full archery index. So it's not just geohashing. It allows full bounded box and polygon queries. Uh, this is an application created by Matt Sodgen, Civic API where he's taken basically all the data from the <coughs> Portland government and just uploaded it into CouchDB to provide an API for anybody that needs to use that data. OK, so that's how CouchDB and MEM-based work. Are there any questions now? Cool, I'll go ahead. So as I said, uh, Membase right now is a persistence layer to Memcached. So right now it's using SQLite for its persistence. There's an EP engine which stores data from Memcached to disk. What's happening now is that's going to be replaced with CouchDB as the persistence engine. So data that gets written into Memcached is going to go written as a document straight into Couch. So for each of those values, you can, if you don't need to use views, you don't need to, you don't want to query your data, then you can just turn it off and everything's pretty much the same as it was before. Uh, but if you do, you can store JSON encoded documents into Membase. They'll still be served out of RAM, they'll still be served very quickly. However, when they go into Couch, we'll decode them and put them inside CouchDB as documents. Otherwise, they get sent as binary attachments. So similarly, before, uh, when I showed the JSON document for what couch documents look like, there's the ID special uh, values that are stored that are related to the membase data are prefixed with a dollar sign here. It tells you, so things in memcache can expire. You can define when you want them to expire. So they have metadata attached and they have attachments, and below, if you've got valid JSON that you send to Membase, then it will get decoded and stored as a CouchDB document. And so, it's not on this slide. So that means we can specify views for your data that's stored inside of Membase in the same way that I showed you two slides ago. Uh, the exact same code will now work inside your, mem inside your Membase data. Uh, so we have a very simple mechanism for pulling in data from a uh, very simple method for pulling together views from separate servers. 
where they all have separate v-buckets that relate to one database. So it's a simple, you've got a hierarchical tree of servers, uh, each that contain their own v-buckets and possibly child nodes. Then they just uh, get called with their, when the server requests a view, each child node just starts emitting. So there's C, server C here. It has, node C has a virtual bucket 9 and a virtual bucket 3 on itself, and it also has child nodes of H, I, and J. As you request data from the view, each of those emit functions will just start getting called straight away and go straight back to node C. And identically, node C will start streaming the results the second it gets them. Uh, Then vbucket9 hasn't been returning, so it carries on and waits. Then eventually, uh, each view server will output a terminating statement, which is represented by phi here. Uh, and that says all of my child nodes and all of my vbuckets have reported their data. OK, that was going quite quick. Uh, so is there any questions? Uh, hi. hi. So, can I just uh, re re recapitulate uh, the thing about um, replication? Uh, so, Couchbase has always a master-master replication. If I have three Couch no, DBs, they all have the same data, right? Yeah. So, if I want to shard it, I need to do it manually. Okay. Uh, if I want it to have three different Couches, I must, as a client, decide where to write. The CouchDB has no support for sharding. Right? Not automated sharding. There okay. is a product from a company called CloudAnt uh, okay. called Big Couch. There's a talk on that, I think, two after this. Uh, and they'll explain Big Couch where they do provide sharding and view okay. collation. And, uh, okay, and Membase on the other side, this basically sharded, right? Yeah. You have many nodes and you have few replicas. Yeah. So, uh, Couchbase does, uh, okay, so so each Membase no, mem mem node have it, its own Couch underlying. Yeah. Underline. So basically, Couchbase is sharded because of the Membase. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. So you have, um, uh, as far as I understand it, two methods of conflict resolution. Membase had its own, and then CouchDB has you know, the MVCC model? Membase didn't have uh, conflict resolution. So it, it used like a last write wins uh, type no, of strategy? No, it was a single server consistency. So only one server was in control of a key at any point. OK, and OK. So, so, so I guess my, my question is, um, is this switching to using uh, Couchbase's revisions uh, across the cluster, or is that just hidden from the, the Yeah, client? that's it's entirely hidden from the application. So EP Engine at the back end will still be using MVCC, but because only one Couchbase node is in control of a key, it's the one that rejects and accepts any rights. So there's no pos. It doesn't have, CouchDB has a big advantage that it can work offline. Membase uh, and Couchbase is something that requires to work in an existing, in a connected cluster and doesn't uh, accept partition tolerance. Any more questions? I kind of expected to get interrupted quite a lot, so I went through everything fairly quickly. We still have about 15 minutes left. <laughs> 15 minutes. OK. Uh, so I'll show some demos of <coughs> the couch to be 
API. Uh, this is part of the things that, uh, because CouchDB can store binary attachments, this is a fairly uh, good example of something that's built entirely from CouchDB. Uh, doesn't depend on anything else. So that uh, tasks application, this is served entirely out of CouchDB. And I can use an editor that's built. Uh, this is also served directly out of CouchDB. So you can build, so this is Couch Tasks. If you store from JSON documents, this is the type of, uh, all right. For web applications, uh, you're generally writing this type of data to post to the server, uh, where you're generating JSON from your web application, posting it directly into CouchDB. and it's updated automatically. Right. I was definitely hoping for more questions, so go on. Thank um, you. Imagine I have one gigabyte of data in my um, couch, and I only update a few um, documents. But this means that the whole gigabyte will be rewritten on compaction. So that all my old, doc maybe I have half of the documents which never change, and those will get rewritten on every compaction. Should I worry about this? And do you worry about it? <laughs> do you mean if you have single gigabyte documents or just lots of data? Yeah, another question is, uh, are the attachments um, mm -hmm. saved in the same uh, file as the um, documents themselves, so they also get rewritten? Uh, yes, they are currently right now. So compaction is a thing that you organize yourself when you want to do. Uh, it's fairly possible to split out attachments into a separate file, but right now, because they've got an index lookup that you can stream the data directly from that file as long as you have the start point. There's not really been much problem up until now to need to do that. Uh, as I said, the new version of CouchDB was released yesterday. That does have auto compaction. Or did that get in the new? No. Uh, there is ways to do auto compaction, but generally it's something that you organize yourself and it's one of the tasks that you'd maintain for when your server is under low load, it's uh, it's not too performant. It's not too bad to be rewriting the data on compaction. Uh, it's not a problem that lots of people have. The bigger problem is invalidating views. So you want to make sure that uh, you're not rewriting the views under load very much because they need to be. If you change the view at all, then you need to rerun the view on the entire set of data, and that's a lot more expensive. I have a couple questions. Um, so first, what's the license going to be on this Couchbase thing? Couchbase is MGPL, uh, AGPL, sorry? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's Apache license. <laughs> I, mean, but, I mean, CouchDB, so, so Couchbase, whatever, will also be Apache license? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. that's what I was saying, Couch, okay. uh, CouchDB is an Apache project. And okay, so, so the... So this um, combination will become the new CouchDB product, or is there CouchDB and then there's... Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, Couchbase is a kind of commercial company. Uh, CouchDB is an upstream project from ours. So okay. CouchDB is an Apache project that there's a PMC set board members. Okay. Some of them work for Couchbase, but a lot of them don't. So, so. so the final product will be CouchDB, which will include Membase? No. Uh, Apache is a completely separate project, so they'll continue on the release cycle pretty much exactly as before, and Couchbase will be 
they'll still be contributing back to Apache CouchDB, but Couchbase itself will just be a completely separate product. Okay, so what's the license on that? That's Apache license as, as well. As well, okay. Yeah. Um, and what's the timeline? When will this be available in some form? Uh, the timeline is, I'm not entirely sure when the lots, but at the end of July. Okay, and then the last question, so um, this goes a little bit in the direction of compaction again, is that, I mean, when I use mem cache, you know, I'm writing a lot and I'm reading a lot. And yeah. so then I end up with a lot of versions, which means that I'm compacting a lot. Yeah. And I might be a 24-7 shop, is that? Uh, th those are the type of things that are handled by uh, Couchbase itself. So CouchDB expects you to manage this manually. Whereas in Couchbase, some of the things might not go through the full MVCC. Like we have access to the internal files, so we might not. A lot of the things as well, uh, Membase does write deduplication. So if you have a working set of data, it will queue the data until it writes to disk. So it will only keep the key of the data that you're writing inside the queue. And then if there's been lots of edits to that, it won't generate a lot of I.O. It will write the last. <coughs> it will only write the last of it to persist to disk. Uh, and it will also be included. It will have its own compaction manager included. OK, thank you. Could you uh, outline some use cases for Couchbase? What what would this be suited best for? Uh, yep. One sec, I'll put this back up. Couchbase is uh, the use case that it's being built for is very much uh, being asked for by the current uh, customers of Membase. So they have lots. They generate lots of data. The Kind of most uh, common markets for that are ads, impressions, and social gaming. And so they have lots of data that they need to read and write very rapidly, archive the old data to make sure it's persistent. But right now, they only have the access to read and write individual keys. They don't have any ability to introspect any of their data. They can't say who belongs on these servers, I want all the documents for this type, this player, or all the documents in this country, or for this particular game. So Couchbase has been, Couch has been integrated on the back end of Membase so that people can access those type of, can answer those type of queries. Is uh, currently the only way to query data is to write MapReduce functions, right? Yeah. Is there any plans on creating a, a, high, a more high level query language on top of that? Something yeah, like uh, there's, well, when I say the only way, there is inside Membase and CouchDB. In CouchDB, there's also a changes feed, uh, which will give you an update every single time a data document is written to the database. And the same way at the tap feed, this can be plugged into things like Elasticsearch and provide your own indexing functions on top of the MapReduce views that CouchDB do. There are, there is work being done on query type languages or search indexing built into Couch, but they're not on any roadmap whatsoever. And there's, there's lots of people that do. So Robert Newson has built CouchDB Lucene which will provide, which puts everything from the changes feed into solar and maintains its own views. Are you? Do you plan to enhance the geospatial functions of um, CouchDB or CouchBase? Do you have a, I see Volker is here. Do you have a couple of people working with him on, on that topic? Yeah, uh, sorry, what was the question again? Um, do you plan to uh, enhance the geospatial um, functions of CouchDB or GeoCouch in, in the near future, or I do not see I do not see that uh, very um, described on the on the Coach base and the CouchDB. Uh, okay, page. so I, I have to I have to dig for that dig for information to get more information on that. Or, it's or not contact Volker. 
Yeah, it's not particularly documented now, but uh, I'll come with. Do you want to give Volker the mic? <laughs> On the spot. Yeah, uh, so uh, the Geo Couch is definitely part of a couch base, so it will be included and improved. So, um, yeah, it's on the roadmap end. Yeah. yeah, So and it's also inside the current release. So the current releases of couch base include Geo Couch. <laughs> yeah, they're reasonably big, but... All right. Yeah. So. Sorry. Thanks a lot. Sorry. I did. Uh, I generally get interrupted a lot when I talk, usually, and it turns into a long discussion. So that's what I timed my talk for. Uh, so hope that was helpful for you. And I'll be around the whole time if anybody wants to ask me any more questions outside. Oh, thanks a lot. <laughs>